You might be concerned that with ammo now in short supply, I may not play for you the song of my people. Ah, fear not. All right, range work time now with the Glock 19X and the SIG M18. The SIG M18, recently I brought you the first video on this and I have fired it uh, probably a few hundred rounds through it. This Glock 19X has never been fired. I've owned it for probably a year, but I've yet to put a single round through it. Uh, there's a little bit of a story there. I did do a full video on the Glock 19X when they first came out. That was a loaner. Um, good friend of the channel loaned me that gun, and I did, the, uh, did all the, the range work with it and then sent it back to him. So then I didn't have one. Well, then I purchased a 19X for myself <laughs> so that I could continue to do more work with it, and plus I just wanted to have one. So I had that Glock 19X for several months and I hadn't fired it and then I ended up donating it to, uh, to a fundraiser, uh, Second Amendment fundraiser. So that kind of went away. And then finally I got another one <laughs> and I've had it forever. It's been sitting in the safe um, and uh, now I'm going to put the first rounds through it. So both guns are clean, both guns are freshly lubed with extreme weapons grease. That includes the Glock even though it's never been fired. And since I'm holding it, let's go ahead and start with it. Do a little break-in. Probably more of a break-in for me than a break-in for the guns. My friends at Tactical AR500 targets provided that target you see downrange. They support me so you should consider supporting them. Wow, <laughs> just like I remember it. P320 M18 now. And just like I remember that one too. <laughs> nice. Well, this is a head to head, but you know, I might have a hard time picking a winner, so forgive me if I don't. So I have two magazines for each gun loaded up uh, with a full box, and this is Magtech 115 grain ball ammo. Uh, just good general purpose range stuff. You can usually find it on sale. I think I found it on sale uh, at some point on Midway, Midway USA. Uh, those days are gone for a while. You're not gonna be finding any nine millimeter ammunition on sale, I'm afraid to say. Um, anyway, uh, I loaded up the full box. All right, so I have one mag for each gun with 10 rounds and one mag for each gun with 15 rounds. That adds up to 50, that's the full box. So here's the 15 rounder in the Glock. <sighs> and you know, here we are in the roaring 20s, so what, nothing says the 20s like a flapper. Let's see if I can hit the flapper. Well, I mostly hit it. That was the 19X. See how I make out with the M18.
Oh, I missed on the last one. Okay, a few of the key specifications and numbers between these two very similar guns. Starting with barrel length, which is slightly longer for the Glock 19X at 4.02 inches. That is the standard Glock 19 barrel length. The P320 M18 is 3.9 inches. Overall length corresponds to that with 7.44 inches for the Glock, 7.2 for the SIG. Total height of the pistol from the bottom of the magazine to the tip of the top of the rear sight is 5.47 inches for the Glock and an even 5.5 inches for the SIG. The 19X is also a wee bit lighter at just a hair under 25 ounces while the SIG is about 28 ounces and in both cases that is with an empty magazine. They also take a very different approach in terms of the rifling in their barrels. The Glock has its traditional polygonal rifling and the M18 has the more industry traditional lands and grooves. They both come equipped with good quality sights. Glock puts their steel night sights on the 19X and SIG puts their SIG light night sight out front with the rear sight being also a tritium night sight incorporated into the removable plate. Published width of the Glock 19X is 1.3 inches and the published width of the P320 M18 is 1.6 inches. Those measurements are taken across the widest part of the handgun and so with an ambidextrous external thumb safety on the M18 clearly that makes a big difference and that's where that dimension comes from. As part of calculating the Justin Opinion Grip Index I also do my own width measurement and I do it in a very specific area from the grip tang to the trigger where your thumb and forefinger are going to grip the pistol. And according to my measurements there the Glock is 1.16 inches in width and the SIG is 1.092 so it's actually thinner where you hold it. Speaking of Justin Opinion Grip Index it is 3.17 for the Glock and 2.94 for the SIG. And the other important number that's part of that is the trigger reach. Distance from the back strap to the front face of the trigger on the Glock is 2.73 inches. And on the M18, 2.69 inches. So depending on your hand size and the kind of ergonomics you like and so forth, that number will make a difference. You will be able to feel the difference between the two guns. Okay, a couple of other key differences between the Glock 19X and the SIG M18. Uh, one, which is actually kind of subtle, but I wanted to point it out. and I don't know how well it's going to show up here in this light because colors look different in a lot of different kinds of light and cameras don't always capture them. But they are both flat dark earth and the polymers have a slightly different hue to them. Um, I think the SIGS is a little more brown or a little more magenta perhaps and the Glox is a little more on the yellow side um, but they're very similar but the slides the, the coating and the finish on the slides um, is definitely different. I like them both and I, I kinda like them both equally <laughs> and differently um, so I'm not going to say one, you know, I, I don't have a favorite, you may, but the Glock looks a little more gold and the SIG is more bronze. They both did a fantastic job. Uh, they just approached that particular coloring from a different perspective, or at least they came out with a different result. I like them both. And they are different um, and they're both pretty. Another difference that I wanted to point out is uh, the safety system. Of course, the Glock has its standard traditional Glock 
safe action system, as they call it, that includes this safety that you see in the center of the trigger. That safety has to be compressed fully before the trigger can be moved rearward. So that is, that is a form of manually operated safety. Basically means you've got to have a finger on that trigger. There are also some internal safety mechanisms like a drop safe and things of that nature. But there is no external manual safety on the Glock 19X. The M18, however, in contrast, has a smooth metal trigger. It's not a polymer trigger like the Glock. And you can see that it is a one-piece trigger shoe. There is no safety built into it. However, there is an external manual safety on the M18, and it is an ambidextrous safety. It is also a safety done right, in my opinion, because it is very 1911-like. It's easy to operate. It's easy to engage and easy to disengage. Of course, the SIG also does have internal safety mechanisms, such as drop safety and things of that nature. Well, it is right now the end of March, just about the end of March, uh, as I speak. I don't know when you'll see this because you know I got to edit the video and then I got to upload it and then it goes in the queue with other things that are already done so again I don't know exactly when you'll be watching this when I will have uploaded it but right now we are in the middle of our craziness right the whole coronavirus thing and the whole social distancing and all that so I just want to reassure you guys um, first of all, I hope that everyone watching this is healthy and well and doing okay and staying safe. Even no matter when you're watching, I don't care if it's three years from now, I hope all, I hope all those things are still true. Uh, but I do want to reassure you now, uh, while we are in the middle of all this nonsense, that I am six feet from the camera. So you can feel a little bit more comfortable about that. But you know, I work alone. There is no cameraman. There is, there are tripods and cameras and me. That's it. I am the very embodiment of social distancing and have been for a long time. All right, back to the Glock. I've got 15 rounds loaded in, two mags for each. And this is PMC bronze for those of you who just like to know what I'm shooting. You can tell it shoots softer. All right. Where am I? It shoots crookeder. Okay, back to the SIG. M18. Also 15 rounds in two different mags. And of course this one does have a safety. Locks the trigger, locks it up tight. So if you are the kind of person who does like to have an external safety, well, maybe another reason to like the SIG. And it's a nice safety if you're into that sort of thing. I'm missing. Go back to the big one. I can hit that. The ergonomics of both of these guns are really nice. I am really enjoying shooting them both. They both have that same type of configuration. They both have that four inch ish barrel and the long 17 round grip. And I have become an appreciator of that particular configuration. All right, let me just pump off a couple double and triple taps here and see how they handle it, see how they stay flat. Of 
Well, the Glock shoots flat. It does shoot nice and flat. How about the M18 now? I have a little bit harder time working the trigger fast on this gun. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, I can't get the uh, I can't get the groove going with running this trigger fast on the M18. That's very strange. Each gun comes equipped with three magazines from the factory. However, there is a big difference in capacity. The 19X comes with one 17 round magazine, the traditional Glock 9mm 17 round magazine in flat dark earth, and two extended magazines. Basically it's a 17 round magazine with a plus two base plate. You can see the witness holes even still just go to 17. So 19 rounders, two 19 rounders, and one 17 rounder is what you get with the Glock 19X. The SIG M18 comes with one 17 round magazine with the standard base plate and two 21 round magazines that have also a very extended base plate in flat dark earth but they also are specifically built to be 21 round magazines as you can see there by the witness holes and the designation so if capacity out of the box is what you're after the SIG has you covered a little better of course, keep in mind those 33 round fun sticks from Glock will fit and function perfectly in the 19X. Another measurement that is important to a lot of folks and certainly one that I am always interested in is the trigger pull. Using my Lyman digital trigger pull gauge, I got for the 19X 5 pounds 4 ounces as the best, in other words, the lightest. That I measured and for the M18 six pounds and two ounces was the best or the lightest that I measured there so I don't often get to say this but the Glock has a slightly lighter trigger pull So one obvious difference between the SIG M18 and the Glock 19X is that the SIG is cut for an optic. It has an optic ready slide. 19X does not. Pretty much that simple. So we could debate all day whether or not having an optic on your handgun is an advantage, but I think we could probably agree that having the ability to put an optic on your handgun is an advantage. One of the things I like to do when I'm doing a head-to-head -head is just do some offhand shooting at, at, right now I'm at 13 yards from my target, uh, and I like to just do some offhand shooting at a target, slow fire, five rounds or so, just to see which gun I'm shooting better on any particular day. Uh, and I'm sometimes very surprised by what I learn, uh, either about myself or about the guns I'm shooting uh, by that, because it's not always what I expect. I'm going to shoot five rounds of Sig Sauer's M17 ammo. This is plus P military grade NATO 9mm ammo. Seems appropriate since both of these guns are military designed. One was submitted for the military trials and the other is currently in military use. All right, so I'm going to start out with the M18. Five rounds of Sig's M17. 124 grain plus P ball ammo. 
I'm going to go uh, to the top target. Okay, <laughs> now five rounds with the Glock 19X. So I was aiming for the, the white bullseye on those targets, and I wanted to have that white bullseye just visible on the top of my front sight. And I was having a harder time with the SIG getting it to stay there, you know, where I wanted it than I did with the Glock. I found it much easier to hold my sight picture with the Glock 19X. And I think the group shows that, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to give the P320 M18 a chance at redemption. I'm going to do the test one more time uh, in opposite order. I'm going to shoot the Glock first at the top target, then I'm going to shoot the SIG at the bottom target, and I'm going to use SIG Elite Performance 124 grain jacketed hollow point. This is my carry stuff. So starting with the Glock. Okay, and now the M18. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, I kind of I kind of felt myself throw one wild with the Glock, but man, <laughs> that's pretty nice right there. If that's all four, and then uh, that's not a bad group right here either. But I might have to think about adjusting those sights a little bit. All right, let's take a quick look at those targets. So the target on the left was the M17 ammo, and the target on the right was the V-Crown ammo. They're both Sig Sauer ammunitions. Had a little trouble with the M18. That's this group up here, and you can see that's a, that's a bit large, but it's deceiving because it actually measures 3.84 shot to shot from the widest point. So that's actually not that bad a group. It's under 4 inches, and that's offhand at... 13 yards, but certainly I knew I could do better, and it knew it could do better. <laughs> but the 19X actually shot its best group of the two with this ammo, the M17 ammo. This entire group of five shots is 1.63 inches, and the best three, just 3.85, so just a tiny bit over three-eighths of an inch of the best three, and again offhand, at 13 yards, that's not bad. I'll take it. I'll pretend I can shoot that good all day long. 
So over here, this was the V-Crown ammo, and up here is the 19X. We reversed, remember, we went top to bottom and bottom to top. So 19X shot a group of 3.42, all five. You can see one of them is definitely a flyer. We'll chalk that up to yours truly. The best three up here, you've got two in one hole and one right next to it. That's .307, extremely good. And the M18 shot its best group with the V-Crown ammo, and this full five-shot group is 2.39. And the best three at exactly a half inch, and again, we've got another twofer right here, two shots in one hole, one right next to it, and they measure center to center about a half inch. Okay, just a few quick visuals here for comparison. Looking straight down at the two of these guns, the SIG on the left, the Glock on the right, you can see that they are very, very similar in overall length. If we line up the, uh, the breech face of each gun pretty well, you can see that they are very, very close. Let me hold them up for you here a little bit closer. We'll put slide to slide, and the one thing you do notice is that definitely have a higher bore axis on the SIG than you do on the Glock, but we've all known that, right? It's really not so much about the slide, it's about that grip tang and that beaver tail and how far the web of your hand is able to come up on the frame. The slides themselves are actually fairly close. Alright, so there's my head-to-head. -head with the relatively new SIG M18 and the relatively not quite so new now, Glock 19X. Do I have a favorite between them? Not really, I like them both a lot. They are different enough that I can definitely tell the difference when I'm shooting one versus the other, and I think that was probably part of my problem shooting them back to back like that, is they have very different ergonomics. But I know if I spent the day shooting either one of them, I would do really well, and if I didn't, it wouldn't be the gun's fault. Whichever one you might like better is really going to come down to personal preferences, or perhaps, if you have the opportunity to test them both, which one you shoot best. I think what we learned is, on this particular day for me, I shot them both pretty well. I shot one better under certain circumstances, and I shot the other one better under different circumstances. So I think I'm going to kind of call it a draw. I like them both. I'm keeping them both. I hope I gave you some good information in case you're trying to choose between these two. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.